Mr. Adley. Uh, we're going to continue on with the miscalculations of the lightning girl. And we're going to be reading chapters 27 to 29 today. So here we go. Chapter 27. Chapter 27, miscalculations of the lightning girl. There we go. You hear noise in the background. That's my kids. The next day on the bus, Wendy acts like normal. Normal Wendy. Except her backpack is full of candy. I'm afraid if I left it at home, my mom would throw it in the trash, she says. Do you want to count it? No. Relax, she elbows me. I was joking. I was up all night worrying that Wendy would tell everyone that I was a genius. I imagine sitting in the cafeteria and Wendy yelling, Listen up, everyone. You need to know something about Lucy. This girl, my BFS, is a certified, certified genius. But I also stayed awake worrying that she would be mad at me. Wendy, I'm sorry I didn't tell you earlier. It's not a big deal, she says while sucking on a Tootsie Pop. Well, it is to me. Can you not share? You don't think I can keep a secret, do you? No, I say it more as a reflex than a true belief. I won't say anything, I promise. Thanks, I say. I open my backpack and give her my gummy worms. Her mom made her hand over all the sticky candy the moment we got home last night. You can't have that with braces, she said. I'm not trying to buy windy silence. Well, maybe I am a little. In last period, I get an envelope addressed to the Guardians of Lucille Fanny Callahan. Everyone gets an envelope. They're four by six inches in size, white and sealed. Still, some kids open them. Report cards? I whisper to Wendy. Yep, she tears hers open. Yes. Bring these back tomorrow. Signed, Mrs. Shields, our social studies teacher demands. I'll give everyone who brings it back promptly five extra points on your next quiz. Mrs. Shields loves to give out bonus points. Three points for having a sharpened pencil. Five points for being in your seat on time when she has a sub. Ten points for bringing in interesting newspaper articles. I hold on to the white envelope all through class and still have it in my hands when I get on the bus. Just to open it, Wendy says. What are you afraid of? Is it because you're supposed to be a genius? I am a genius, I whisper. Maybe she doesn't want it to be true. When working hard to be an unimpressive A student, I try to get a few wrong on every test. I skip one out of every nine homework assignments in each class to keep my grades in the very low A range. I never participate in class, but that's for other reasons. Wendy finally pulls the envelope out of my hands. Hey, but I'm too late. She's already slid a finger under the flap and has it open. She hands me the folded sheet of paper. Do you want me to look first? She offers. No, I open the single page. I have, all, I have A's in all the classes except math and language arts. Miss Fleming gave me a B. The math doesn't even have a grade. It has an I for incomplete. That's not awful, Wendy says over my shoulder. I look back at the report. Each class has a comment, and they are pretty much the same. Lucy is a conscientious worker. Lucy's work is of a high standard. Lucy needs to participate more in class discussions. Mr. Stoker's com comment is the only truly original one. A parent-teacher conference requested. I fold the paper and put it back in the envelope. How'd you get an incomplete? Wendy asks. I don't know. I wonder how Levi did in math. He's on MathWiz daily. And the few grades I've seen have been better. He had a 79 on the last quiz. My mom is always like, do your best, Wendy. That's all anyone can ask. But I know if I got less than an A, she'd flip. She pushes her hair behind her ears. Luckily, I got all A's. You know what that means? On a roll. No, well, yeah, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm probably an epic birthday got straight A's. I told you that. That water park place? Rocky Mountain Lodge. She squeezes my arm. It's going to be fun. Sounds fun. Your Nana isn't going to ground you for getting an incomplete, is she? Because you have to go. I've never been grounded. Good. I'm inviting all the girls in our homeroom. Well, my mom is. She's worried I'm not trying hard enough to make friends. But it wouldn't be fun without you. All the girls? That's 13. I know. We'll have to get a suite. They have these cool rooms with sets of bunk beds, and each of them has a TV mounted over the bed. Do you think Maddie will go? I've never seen Maddie outside of school, and I'd like to keep it that way. I'm sure. She's been to all of my birthday parties. Our moms are best friends. Yeah, you've mentioned that, and you and Maddie used to be super close. My voice comes out mocking and mean. Wendy gives me a sideways look, like I'm speaking in a different language. What about Levi? I ask quickly. No boys. It's a sleepover. Never invite boys to a girl's sleepover. Same. Wendy doesn't stop talking about her birthday until she gets off the bus. I'll call you later. We can talk more about it.
Nah, it does ground me. That wouldn't be the worst thing. Then I could avoid the water park friend fest. No such luck. Nana laughs when she sees my report card. Is this your first B? Yeah. Maybe we should hang it on the fridge, she says, and she smooths the paper and then admires it like a work of art. And what's the I for? Incomplete. Ah, uh, are you still pretending to be dumb? Not dumb. Normal. I snatch the paper back. You're not displaying it anywhere. Well, it's dumb to pretend to be something you're not. I stomp off to my room, ignoring Nana's pleas for me to come back, and log on to my computer. Here, I don't have to pretend. I join a calculus chat. Lightning girl. Anyone need me? Hip hypotenuse. Always. Chapter 28. We go to the pet hut on Friday after school. I check out the dogs and plug their data into my formula. In my head. This is the winner. I point to a black lab named Flint. His estimated wait is 20 to 24 days. Wendy pulls a leash and harness from the wall, and Levi opens the kennel. I'm going to see Pi. Taking pictures and getting to know the dogs is not my favorite part of the project. I quietly knock on the office door before opening it. No one is inside. No one ever is. Hey, Pi. But my dog doesn't greet me like usual. I walk around the desk and pull out the chair. No dog. Only my green and yellow sweatshirt. I go to the front desk, where Noah is reading a textbook. Where's Pi? I ask. He shrugs. With Claire. They're going to do going to the vets. Again? I don't know. I wait in the office. I enter three adoption forms into the computer. I fill Pi's water bowl. Levi and Wendy finish taking pictures of Flint. They put up the new post, complete with a picture of Flint catching a frisbee in midair. I like your action shot, I tell Levi. When they finish, I stall and suggest they put up another post. There's a chihuahua mix in the second kennel on top. I think his name is Marty. While Levi and Wendy are walking Marty, Claire finally returns with Pi. Oh, Lucy, hi. Pi return, runs across the office and leaps into my lap. I catch him like a football. He licks my face. He's the only animal on the planet that I'd allow this honor. I was getting worried. Talking to Pi, but Claire answers for him. Lucy, we need to talk. She makes an exaggerated sad face and takes a seat on the corner of the desk. There's no easy way to say this, you see. Cutie Pie is sick. Very sick. He has cancer. No, I say. That's not right. I was just at the vet, she says. I rub behind his ears. He closes his eyes and stretches his neck. His tail wags and his whole body vibrates. I'm sorry, Lucy. The office door opens without a knock. Wendy and Levi come in. I guess you found your dog, Levi says. You're panicking for nothing. I put my chin on top of Pi's head so I don't have to look at my friends. You okay? Wendy asks. I just told Lucy the awful news, Claire says. Cutie Pie has cancer. He has a tumor at the base of his brain. You may have noticed that he tilts his head a lot. I did. I thought he was very inquisitive, I thought. The vet ran an MRI, Claire continues, which is like an advanced x-ray. Cutie Pie has a tumor the size of a ping pong ball. It's affecting some motor skills. It will gradually get worse. He may lose balance, walk into things, be, able, be unable to control his bladder. Wendy stands over me. She puts a hand on my shoulder and her other hand on Pie's back. Poor dog. I'm glad y'all are here. I wanted to give you a chance to say goodbye. Claire clasps her hands and pulls them to her chest, almost like, almost like she's praying. Goodbye, Wendy repeats. He's not going to die right now. Claire shakes her head. No, someone from Animal Control is supposed to pick him up today or tomorrow. You said if we did the data entry, you'd keep him. I want to pull out a signed document or show a video of our conversation. I need physical evidence to remind Claire that she promised to help Pi. I have nothing to show her. My hands clenched into empty fists. What's going to happen to him? Wendy asks. Don't make her say it. You know what's going to happen, Levi says. You cannot adopt our out sick dogs. There are too many healthy animals that need homes. I'm sorry, Claire frowns. But you said you'd keep them if we volunteered for you. We've entered 239 adoption forms into the computer. That has to be worth one dog's life. That was before I knew his condition. I'm sorry. Claire crosses her arms and hugs her chest. She wants to rescue animals, but she has to think about the numbers, too. You can't do this. I'll adopt him. I'm taking him home with me. You aren't going to kill him. Calm down, Wendy says squeeze and squeezes my arm. Lucy, let's go for a walk. Let's get some air, Claire suggests. Pi looks up at me, his head angled. His mouth hangs open, which makes it look like he's smiling. Fine. I stand up and hold Pi in my arms. Claire probably expects me to put him on the ground. I refuse to let go. She pulls open the door. I follow her to the trails in the back where volunteers walk the dogs. I needed to get out of that office, Claire says. Fear my head. 
I nod. Pi wiggles in my arms. He's not trying to escape. He's trying to get comfortable. Lucy, I know you can't adopt Cutie Pie. I've seen you two together. If the family was able to take in a dog, he would have gone home with you weeks ago. I know, but we walk down a muddy path. I stumble on a root, then catch myself. Here, let me carry him, Fair says. He must be getting heavy. She's right. He's heavy and squirmy. Pie's not happy about the handoff at first. I rub his head and tell him it's okay, but nothing is okay. I know we could find someone to adopt Pie. We'll put him... We'll put him on our blog. I bet he has 30 phone calls on the first day. It's against our policy, Lucy. I'm sorry. It's not fair. What if someone wants to adopt him? He's not available for adoption. We cannot ask a family to pay $175 for a terminal dog. There are too many. Then just give him away, I say. Free dog to a good home. Claire stops walking and looks up at the cloudy sky. You have to give him a chance. He's... I know, Mr. Gonzalez, no cutie pie. No, let's see if we can save him. My eyes fill with tears, just like Mr. Gonzalez's emojis. I want to wipe them away, but I can't. Touching your eyes, nose, or mouth is an easy way for bacteria and germs to get into the body. He tries to use the sleeve of my jacket. Pi looks from her to me. What good is it being a genius if you can't help one dog? Claire's chin trembles. The rims of her eyes are red. Are you okay? I ask. She nods. When I was a kid, I hated it when adults told me, life's not fair. I understood, but it always felt like giving up. And I was just about to say the same thing to you. Life isn't fair. I take Pi back so he, she can wipe her tears. I'm sorry, I say. For what? This isn't your fault. You want to help animals. I know that. She always smells like dogs and seems to work every day. She would help if she could. So do you and Levi and Wendy, she smiles. No, I shake my head. I don't care about the animals. I mean, I don't want bad to happen to them, but I don't love them or anything. I'm more interested in the numbers. I don't care about Rufus, Murphy. I didn't care about Rufus, Murphy, Flint, Jesse, or any of them. I think of the pie. He's different. That's all. I didn't mean, I hope you don't think I'm a bad person. My nose runs and my eyes are scratchy. I take a deep breath. I read that 670,000 dogs are killed in shelters each year, and I only care about one of them. I'd let all the other dogs go if I could save Pi. I don't think you're a bad person. She goes to hug me, but stops. I've pulled away from her before. I'll keep Cutie Pie here for a bit longer, okay? Really? Let's give it a try. You can put him on the blog, but he's not officially available for adoption. I nod. He's free to a good home. Just make sure you're honest about his condition. It's a tough situation. We don't want to trick anyone into falling in love with a terminally ill dog. We have to be honest, okay? Okay, and thank you. Thank you, Lucy. I love all these dogs, but sometimes I forget what it's like to love just one. Chapter 29, last chapter of the day. Pet Hut Dog Profile Blog, November 2nd. Meet Cutie Pie. Cutie Pie is a six-year-old beagle husky mix with a terminal brain cancer. He was abandoned at the Pet Hut shelter on September 18th. He eats 2.5 cups of kibble per day. His life expectancy is less than a year. Cutie Pie likes kids, middle school aged. He prefers a non-smoking house and likes to be called Pie. There's no adoption fee because this is not an adoption. Free to a good home. Free. I create the post for Pie. If I had money, I'd hire a marketing person or a journalist to do it. The lightning strike did nothing for my writing skills. Pie deserves better than my best. Make sure to be honest and use lots of exclamation points. Levi adds eight pictures of Pie, double the number of photos we usually put up for a dog. In two of them, Pie wears my green and yellow sweatshirt. I know he's going to find a good home, and for extra good luck, I asked Nana to pray for him. So we will stop there. <laughs> that was a sad edition of uh, Reading with Mr. Ebley. So stay tuned tomorrow. Hopefully we'll have something happy to report uh, in the reading. But y'all have a wonderful rest of the day. Kids keep working hard. Keep taking care of each other. Uh, most importantly, stay safe. And remember, range is the way.